my sister was a Marine Corps drill instructor and Semper Fi, right? Ura. And I always wanted to be a Marine, but I couldn't go in because I got pregnant before boot camp. So my recruiter wasn't happy about that. But my sister always said, you could have been a great Marine. You'd have been better than me, which I don't understand if I could have been better than her, but she fulfilled a, 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 you know, a dream of mine once when she was down in Paris Island, South Carolina, and she let me run the obstacle court, or at least part, part of it. And she said, everybody has their weak area. Some people it's the swim, some people it's the wall, some people it's the rope. And for me, I have fantastic legs. I've run marathons, I've great abs, but I've got no upper body strength. So we got to the monkey bars and it was a set of I think six rungs up, six rungs down, six rungs up, six rungs down. It was huge. Maybe those of you Marines watching can tell the exact number. So we got to that. I remember jumping up and I was like, (laughs) (laughs) I couldn't do it. And I fell. And my sister looked me in the face and said, get back up. So I'm like, okay, all right. Now, this time, when I got on the monkey bars, my sister got within inches of my face and she said, next one, next one, next one, next one, next one, go, 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 go. And and I kept going and I made it to the end. Two minutes earlier, I, I couldn't make two rungs. But the very second try, I completed the whole set of monkey bars. Immediately jumped off, my hands had calloused, blistered, and cut the blisters in that one shine. Had blood coming out of each of these. But I was like, yeah, I did it. I did it. I couldn't believe it because that's just always been my nemesis. And as I looked back, I was like, what was the difference? What I realized is the first time I was thinking, oh my gosh, I can't do this. This is hard. I focused on the pain. I focused on what happened, the next wrong. I focused on my weak arm, whatever. But what was going through my head was not positive. Probably something on the lines of, I can't, I can't, I hate this. I'll never get through this. But the difference between that time and the second time is not only was my sister in my face, she was so close, so loud, so fast, that she was louder than my negative self-talk. Before I even had a chance to think about not going, swinging, holding, thinking about the next one, my sister said, next one, next one, move, 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 move. And I succeeded. So many of us have negative self-talk. I'll never be able to do it. I'm going to fail. But let's apply this to our spiritual lives. I think you guys know I'm going to talk about marriage. I always do. I think about the people that say, my spouse is never going to come back. This has always been bad. Oh my gosh, look at how horrible it is. He said this. He's with another woman. She's with another man. And when we think those thoughts, our behaviors mirror them. We get sad, we get depressed, we start thinking God is not going to, it's just not as powerful as we think, and so on. But one of the things that I always do is I remind them, let's think about your prodigal. And and actually, this is an example from very recently. So I had a client, and actually this is several people, because Satan is just such a copycat, he can't do anything on his own, he just needs to keep repeating the same pattern, which is why they come to me, because I've seen the pattern, I tell them about it. The spouse will often, especially, well, so woman recently, her husband left her for another woman, but they always had a good marriage. And the wife continued to be kind. And she could see, well, she couldn't tell until I articulated that I said, your husband's double-minded. He would come home and he'd say, well, you know, I, I did love you, or, well, but we're just not right for each other, or... And she would continue to be kind. Now, in the beginning of affairs, we often are still in our guilt because before we're blinded, we're so deep into our sin that we no longer listen to our consciences. In the beginning, trust me, the first time you have sex outside of your marriage, even if it's an emotional affair, you know you're wrong. 
and your conscience is still really loud. It's like, wow, you're doing the wrong thing, doing the wrong thing, doing the wrong thing. So at that stage, often like the stage this woman's husband was in, he was coming and he was being nice to her. And then he would sit and watch her brush her hair. And then he'd talk to her, but then he'd leave and then he'd come back. And, and she said, I don't know what he's thinking. I don't know what's true. And I said, your husband is double-minded right now. He knows what he's doing is wrong, but he's trying to convince himself. It's right because he's got all these lust feelings for this other woman, but he's got a history with you. And here's the connection to what I was saying is the devil is screaming in this guy's ear. You never loved her. The other woman's better. This is true love. You never felt like this before. Don't go back to your wife. She's going to tell you, she's going to embarrass you. Um, and, and Satan will appeal to his pride. But then the angel, God, is on his other shoulder going, come home. You know you're wrong. Get out of your sin. Now, we think we don't have control, which we don't have full control over what our spouse is choosing, what our prodigals are choosing. But Satan is pulling you here. Angels pulling you here. Your prayers... Even if you do not see the fruit of your prayers, God's saying, I don't need you to, I'm not going to show you every time there's fruit of your prayers. I want you to have faith. Because Satan tries to convince us that if we don't see anything happening, that nothing's happening. He's wrong. God is saying with every prayer uttered from your mouth, I am dispatching an angel. I am doing something. There is a battle taking place in the spiritual realm. You pray. Pray, pray, pray. What I said to this woman, what I say to a lot of men and women is you pray and you are making the voice of that angel louder than the voice of the devil. You have got to help your spouse or any of you, even if this isn't about marriage, but you've got a child who's an, an addict, you've got um, an estranged family member. Your prayers are helping to make that self-talk, that loud, the positive the coming home, the redemption self-talk, which isn't really self-talk. Well, kind of. Your job is to make that spiritual self-talk, the angelic self-talk, louder than the devil's self-talk, than the devil. There's a battle for our thoughts, and our actions follow our thoughts. Period. If you can change your thoughts, you change your actions. But our, our prodigals are captive of the enemy. And your spouse is often on the monkey bars. I'm too weak to go home. I'm too weak to stop my sin. I'm too... And they just succumb. But your prayers are saying, come home. Come home. Now... If we go back to this woman, she said, my husband was here. My friends are saying, don't you let him treat you that way. He's got an apartment. He's not even living with you. Don't let him back in the house. She even had a lawyer. You tell him, you give him an ultimatum. No, I've already done a video about don't do ultimatums. So I said, your loving behaviors are going to increase the volume of that angelic self-talk. Your behaviors your love, your prayers, your battle, your spiritual battle has got to be stronger than what the sa Satan is doing. So when I made it over those monkey bars, it's because I had someone else's help. I had someone else encouraging me. I'm encouraging you. And if you need more encouragement, join my standards group. Go to sacredstanders.org. Go to the bottom of that page. There's a place to sign up to join my standards group. And you'll have a whole community of people that will encourage you across your monkey bars saying, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. If you're not looking at marriage help, but you just feel weak in your faith, I do spiritual direction. I'd be honored to be the voice of God in your life. And I will be in your ear reminding you, Satan is not stronger than the God you worship. And that will help you place your next hand on the next rung, and the next hand on the next rung, until you've made it to the end and accomplished your goal.
I'm Dr. Christine Bacon. Thanks for watching Breakfast with Bacon. And as always, remember to live your life sunny side up.